So Honk for Jesus, save your soul, is a dark, 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 uh, religious comedy, um, which is pretty, like, it's definitely, like, bookended by a very depressing nature of, like, religious zealotry and scandal, which might blindside some audiences. <laughs> At least I think it did for a few. So, like, I, I think I should preference it by saying, like, look, if, if you're coming into, to, to this film expecting it to kind of be something like the righteous gemstones where there's a bit of like an arc to the characters where you um where you kind of get to know them and you sympathize with them a little bit but they still like commit like you know questionable acts but you still kind of like laugh at their absurdity you're probably not going to get that here because this is definitely more of a well a bit of a tragedy it's, I mean, well, no, not even a bit of a tragedy. It's, it gets downright depressing at times. Um, in addition to being pretty damn funny. Because, you know, it's, it, it's a satire. And, you know, satires always run into that dark territory. Because, like, satire, satire is all deals, like, it has to condemn. And, it, and it's very clear what this film wants to condemn. And it doesn't make it, like, ambiguous by the end of the film what it's trying to say. So... The story, um, and it's kind of like interesting how this film was shot, and I'll go into that in a bit, but the film is about uh, this married couple of Trinity Childs and Lee Curtis Childs. Um, Trinity is played by Regina Hall, and Lee Curtis is played by Sterling K. Brown, uh, which they have immaculate performances here because they're expected to do a lot. They have to put on a, like a show for the cameras. They also um, have to show like this desperation in their eyes, and they also kind of have to be these bitter bitter people when the cameras are off as well so both of them just going to mention that right out of the gate they have immaculate performances here um but the the film starts off by showing off that they have like a, basically a mega church and they used to have like a great following and like you know they they were a big beacon of like a religious community but all that came to an end when lee curtis was accused of sexually molesting uh some teenage boys and the film takes place after these allegations happen, and they ha try to have an out-of-court settlement. And after that happens, basically, we're watching them try to, like, pick up the pieces. And we watch this happen in kind of, like, a pseudo-mockumentary format. So, like, it's, it's initially staged, like, we see, like, the news footage and stuff like that, and then we cut to, like, documentary footage. Where they're basically like filming um, the childs on their uh, their reopening of their church, and we see like you know them kind of like stagger around, like you know trying to like put on a smile, and every now and then like you know they'll get gum on their shoe and curse a little bit, but they'll try to like keep up appearances for the camera. Um, so we get that mockumentary front, but it's not a mockumentary throughout the film. Like there are parts of the film where it start it stops becoming a mockumentary, and we see what goes on when the cameras are off. And I love how it's staged, too. Like, you, like if you watch closely, you'll see there's a change in aspect ratios. So, like, when you have, like, kind of the more the 4x3 format, you're watching, like, the mockumentary. And then once you get the more, like, anamorphic screen of, like, 16x9, that's when the cameras are off. And But even if you didn't have that, you could tell when the cameras are off because they've essentially become different people. Like, uh, Regina Hall and Sterling K. Brown are just, like, all smiles and fun for the cameras. They might, like, quietly bicker with each other, uh, hoping the mics won't pick them up. But they mostly just keep up appearances. When the cameras are off, uh, they're very bitter about keeping this act up. Um, and you even, like, even when, like, uh, they're still in front of, like, the film crew, you can see that Regina Hall's character is just... You know, she's struggling. She She can't keep it together. She's got, like, this nervousness in her eyes of, like fearing she's going to mess something up with Lee Curtis or that she'll speak out of line or, or doom the church. She basically feels trapped in both, like, this relationship and this religion that she's built into. Like, they have competition, you know, barely anyone follows their church, and it's not looking good for the people who are going to be attending. Like, it's it, it just feels like this is the end of an empire and Regina Hall is basically stuck here because she's stuck by... Uh, this guy who, who essentially like the more you 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 watch what unfolds, it becomes pretty clear that Sterling K. Brown did sex, sexually molest these teenage boys, especially when 
when it's like like when it's revealed that he was trying to like his argument basically reverts to I didn't do it to um well you know they were teenagers so they they knew better so yeah he's a scummy guy you don't like him um and in a sense you you kind of almost like don't want to like Trinity because she's just going along with Lee Curtis but she feels like she has no choice to because like at, at this point it feels like she's in so deep that everyone is just going to see her as just being as despicable as Lee Curtis. Um, So you get a lot of, like, a lot of the humor, I think, comes from, like, definitely... I love how, like, the humor is kind of, like, separated into, like, the documentary format, and then the darker stuff happens off the cameras. Because once it's in the mockumentary format, it's actually pretty funny, like, how it's staged, like, how they time the subtitles. Like, at one point, um, some random person comes up to Lee Curtis and says, like, you know, hey... I don't care about those allegations, man, but you, you made a difference in my life. You were the best person that gave me spiritual guidance. And then the credits will come on that say, this guy is serving in prison. <laughs> so, so just perfect little timing like that. And it's like, it's very, like I said, very, very dark humor to let you know that, no, this ministry, this mega church is not going to survive. It's, you know, it's, it's the twilight for this, you know, for this church. And... Regina Hall's character recognizes this and you can sense that something's bubbling in her. Something's going to boil over and she has to do something. Especially, I, I love kind of like the drama that un- unfolds here because the more that you learn about her, the more you realize there is no way out for her. Like the community despises her. Um, the other churches don't like her. Even worse is the exchange she has with her mother who basically says, look, the Christian thing to do is just stay with your man and, I don't know, wait till he dies? That's all you can do. And she says this with, like, a smile. Like, it's just, like, it's the most normal thing in the world to do is to just endure this pain of just serving as basically Lee, as Lee Curtis's support permanently to the point where, towards the end of the film, she's literally forced to dress up like a clown to, 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 to promote his church. And it's just like, it, it, you get like a really sinking feeling and you feel sorry for, for Trinity by the end. And it's not like a sorry nature and like, like she didn't know what she was doing. She obviously knew what she was doing, but she felt trapped. And, and there's no way out for her. Like even by the point that you get to this great monologue with her, which is just like, if, you, I, if I remember correctly, like most of it was all like in kind of one shot here where you just see her unload on Lee Curtis in front of the cameras that she can't handle this and just like it's the worst thing ever but at the same time after that it it just goes back up back to keeping up appearances like just there's nothing she can do at that point um and and i love how like the film concludes on that by never giving a satisfying conclusion because the thing is a lot of these like religious grifters from like mega churches and stuff like that even on the downslope they'll still be there they'll still hang around and stuff like that. And by the end of this film, even the childs are still hanging around. They're still trying to hope, hold out hope that their ministry will survive. Um, even though, you know, based on everything that we've seen, it's not going to happen. Um, and the, and the film, and I know this, this is going to frustrate a lot of, of the audience too, but it ends, it ends on a very ambiguous note where it doesn't provide a solid conclusion and just kind of holds on this moment of Regina Hall's character realizing I'm trapped, this is the life I live, and I have no idea, you know, how much weight is going to come further on me if I stay in this megachurch. Um, and it's just, it's <laughs> it's some heavy stuff. It's like, it, it, but, but like I said, it's, it's great satire in that, in that rate, in that way, because it is condemning, you know, this kind of like mega church and religious zealotry. And I love the fact that it's not just like, you know, like a contained, you know, perception by uh, Lee Curtis, who has this massive ego that thinks that if you make stuff like big and decadent in your church, like they'll, they'll come back to you. Even if you are being accused of sexual misconduct, they'll, they'll still come back to you, even though they, they won't. That ain't gonna happen. But I, I love the fact that between all this, we get like news footage. Um, we hear a radio call-in show where some of like the the people in this community um, are basically polarized on this issue. They they either believe the allegations and think that 
Lee Curtis is a horrible human being, or they don't believe it because they think that Lee Curtis is just trying to be silenced and that, you know, you know, he, he, the, the benefit that he does to the community and with his church far outweighs any of his criminal intent and stuff like that. So really kind of gross stuff, but stuff that would be believable in this context here. Um, and just like a lot of like dry and wry humor that happens here that's very cynical and insulting where like the rival church run by um the the sumters who are played by nicole uh nicole bahari and um i'm trying to remember the actual name uh confidence i'm trying to like his full name is like a um ukina ukina ekazu i i'm butchering his name i'm so sorry um but but yeah they they do a great job playing this um this kind of like uh rival church that is basically swooping in and taking over everything that the curtis that the childs had built up and the <laughs> and it's just like it's it's funny because you're watching their downfall but you're also cheering it on because yeah th this is a mega church that deserves to fall it's run by an egotistical crazy person um who's married to someone who wants to get out so you're rooting for this downfall and the fact that you don't quite get like the the easy closure for this type of story um just makes this this satire work so well um that this was this was a real surprise with film especially for coming from um like it, it's produced by monkey paw studio so you know jordan peele's company um but it is a directorial debut by adama ebo who also wrote the screenplay here and you know, like for 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 that uh, directorial debut, it's just it's astonishing. It's it is like it 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 knows how to balance the humor and the darkness, and the satire is wickedly sharp here. That it's just such an effective film to both like laugh at, and then kind of feel gross that people like this exist in the world. But then laugh again because you get to watch them have a, the downfall that they deserve. So. <laughs> So, you know, a very, it's a very, very bitterly funny film, I guess is the best way to describe it. <laughs>